What is probably one of the most important organs in your body? Your eyes. You need your eyes to be able to see, to be able to um, get through this world. It's probably one of the most important senses you have. Your vision. And retinopathy, diabetic retinopathy, is one of the most common diabetic complications you can get. Diabetic retinopathy, as in retina, as in your eyes, can cause blurry vision, floaters, and eventually blindness. And we need to talk about it if we want to learn how to stop it, how to reverse it, and how to deal with it if we have it. That's what I want to go over today. So to start, what is retinopathy? Well, your retina is basically the backside of your eye where all of those veins and nerves are going in and giving your eye all those essential nutrients. There's a lot of little veins in your retina. And it turns out if your blood sugar is high, as is our with many diabetics, across your body, then it's also going to be high in those little veins in your eyes, where your retina is. And if that blood sugar is high, it's going to cause major issues. It turns out that the veins in your eyes are aligned with something called parasites. And parasites, much like with the nerves in your body that get damaged by high blood sugars, have aldose protectase enzymes. As in, they can just take in glucose willy-nilly without insulin. So, these little veins in your eye are surrounded by parasites that are uptaking glucose from all the high blood sugar. And what ends up happening is that glucose gets converted into sorbitol, and sorbitol attracts water. So, as a result, water comes flowing in, it swells up, and it bursts. So, to recap, just like with nerve damage, what happens with these parasites and these veins in the retina is that glucose floods in, they make sorbitol, sorbitol makes water flood in, causing swelling, 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 and eventually they burst. What ends up happening with this swelling is that these little parasites burst, and over time this causes little bubbles to form in your veins that burst, which end up leaking blood into your retina and maybe even deeper into your eye in the macula. That bleeding can cause um, floaters in your eyes and can eventually cause blindness. I mean, it really takes the word bloodshot eyes to a whole new level. And this can actually be fairly common and can even happen early. I have a client I'm coaching with right now whose son, just after a few years of experiencing type 1 diabetes as a kid, already was having blood leakage into his eyes. It can happen early, and it's not a joke. We need to take it seriously. Now, over time, this gets worse and worse. Your vision starts getting blurry, and eventually it can go blind. But not just because of the bursting, but also because as a result of your veins swelling up, they get blocked. And when that blood gets blocked off, your eyes start signaling to your body, hey, I'm not getting my nutrients, what gives? We need some extra help. So it'll start making smaller veins to compensate for those blockages. And these smaller veins are tiny, very fragile, very brittle. And guess what? Because of the high blood sugars, those end up bursting as well, causing even more blood leakage, causing even more problems, and eventually... At this kind of severe retinopathy stage will lead to permanent blindness. There's also macular edema in a similar sense where the blood gets um, leaked into your macula which is the um, inner surface of your eye that holds a lot of light sensitive tissue. So again if that gets messed up your eyes is going to get messed up as well. Your macula can also swell also causing similar issues. You don't want that to happen to you. You need to be able to see. If you can't see how are you going to manage your diabetes without help? How are you going to watch these videos? Your eyesight is very important and you need to keep it. Now, how do you avoid all this? Because guess what? The truth is, it can all be avoided. Yes, it is common. Yes, it can happen early, but it can be 100% avoided and even reversed. How do you do that? The normal blood sugars. And by normal, I don't mean blood sugars with an A1C of 6.5 or 7, not what the doctor recommends, but normal non-diabetic blood sugars between 70 and 100 most of the time. Why? Well, it's shown through even very recent studies that even A1Cs over just 5.0 increase your risk of diabetic retinopathy. They did a study very recently where they looked at a population of 
non-diabetics, mind you. Um, of course, you can't find type 1s with an A1C of 4.6, so of course it's non-diabetics. But non-diabetics, they compare ones with an A1C of 4.6 with other people um, that had an A1C of 5.1, of 5.7, of 6.5, and then of, you know, 9.0 plus. And what they found when they grouped these individuals in these different A1C groups is that the people with their A1C of 4.6, they're the baseline, their transfer epinopathy is near zero. But at 5.1, they have double the risk of the people at 4.6. At 5.7, they had around five times the risk of retinopathy than at 4.6. At 6.5, the ADA guidelines that they want you to keep at, your risk of retinopathy is nearly 12 times higher than that of a normal non-diabetic. 12 times. And at 9.0, which I'm sure many diabetics were at, I used to be like that before I made the switch to low carb, your chance of retinopathy goes up 73 times. 73 times higher than the A1C of 4.6. If that doesn't whip you into gear and think, I gotta do something right now, I don't know what will. Your chance of retinopathy with an A1C that high, or even an A1C of 6.5, is huge. It's, if it's not going to happen sooner, it will happen later. The only way to avoid it for life is normal blood sugars. And I have even better news. Let's say you have mild retinopathy right now. You know some blurs. You know some blurry vision. You've had times where blood's leaked into your eyes. There is a solution. Of course, there is a surgery, and they do do that. You, Your doctor will inform you of those options. But there is also a non-surgical, non-pill option. And again, it's normal blood sugars. With normal blood sugars, you can actually reverse your diabetic retinopathy entirely and get your vision back. Now, of course, if you're completely blind, that's permanent. Nothing we can do for you. But if you're not that severe yet then you can actually reverse retinopathy entirely. All you need is normal blood sugars, because once you have normal blood sugars, your swelling will go down because you don't have all this sugar making your parasites swell up, and those veins will have the environment to reform, regrow, and um, get back to normal. You need normal blood sugars in order for your body to heal. And if it does heal, it might take a few years, you will be able to get your vision back. Dr. Bernstein has had many patients and has seen many examples where retinopathy is reversed entirely. Again, it may take a while, but with due diligence, with normal blood sugars, with good control, and I mean actual good control, not the kind of control that the ADA tells you, you'll be able to reverse the retinopathy completely and at the very least, 100% avoid it. That's all for now, everyone. Keep taming that type 1. Remember that retinopathy is very common for most Ibex, but it doesn't have to be common for you. All you need to do is have normal blood sugars. And if you don't know how to get those normal blood sugars right now, check out my series, Three Keys to Taming Type 1, where we go over each and every technique I use every day, and many other diabetics use every day, to control their blood sugars the right way. I'll have a link to that below, along with a link to that study I was talking about showing your risk of retinopathy, even at supposedly good A1Cs. And with that, we'll see you next time.